right lesson two is about limiting factors so these are things that if there's not enough of them it'll slow down photosynthesis but if there's more of them it will increase the rate of photosynthesis so again there's tons of words like we need to understand rate we need to understand the word, what limiting factors are um, and the limiting factors that can speed up and slow down photosynthesis or believe it or not carbon dioxide water which we actually don't really need to know like think about um because we always assume it's there and um, light and then another one is um temperature so how temperature affects photosynthesis and this is basically like enzymes so remember the enzyme shape like uh, denatures and all that it's pretty much that we'll, we'll go over it anyway right so limiting factors so light intensity is measured in lux and if there is no light there is no photosynthesis photosynthesis cannot happen in the dark photo means light so what happens is if that's zero that would be zero and if you increase the light intensity initially it will increase the rate of photosynthesis right during this first bit of the graph which i'll call part a there's a direct proportion um, between the light intensity and the rate of photosynthesis so this is called a linear relationship more keywords linear just means a straight line and it's directly proportional and what that means is if you double one thing it'll double the other so during that first part of the graph um, it's linear it's directly proportional if you double the amount of light it would double the rate of photosynthesis right if you carried on increasing the amount of light would it continue increasing the amount of photosynthesis it can do no eventually it would kind of um have less of an impact and eventually it would have no impact so here here the light intensity is still going up the light intensity is going up but the rate of photosynthesis is staying the same and what we need to say here is if, if we're going to describe this graph is at this part of the graph which we could call that bit b and this bit c during part c light intensity is having no effect on the rate of photosynthesis explain why that is so it is no longer the limiting factor light is no longer the limiting factor something else might be so it could be the amount of carbon dioxide so the only way to increase photosynthesis at even high levels of uh, light you would need to then increase the amount of carbon dioxide um, or you could change the temperature as well so we need to describe these graphs if i just clear that again what's happening in the first part so it's directly proportional as we increase light light goes up the rate of photosynthesis also goes up what's happening here so light intensity goes up light intensity goes up rate of photosynthesis stays the same so light intensity is having no effect on the rate of photosynthesis why is that because it is no longer a limiting factor if we did a different graph for the amount of co carbon dioxide concentration it would also look like this so if there's no carbon dioxide there would be no photosynthesis initially as we increase the amount of carbon dioxide we would increase the rate of photosynthesis but again that would level off because carbon dioxide at some point would no longer be the limiting factor so if we wanted to increase the amount of photosynthesis here we would probably also have to increase the amount of light or change the temperature or something like that right if we did a graph for temperature so we would have temperature on the bottom rate of photosynthesis on the side what would the rate be like at a really really low temperature well the rate would be very low as well so for example at zero degrees photosynthesis isn't going to happen in most plants because water would be frozen as temperature increases the rate would increase we need to use slightly different words now so we're thinking about enzymes and we're thinking about substrates so why would the rate increase as temperature increases 
and this is all to do with kinetic energy increasing. So because the enzymes in the substrate are moving around faster at higher temperatures, the enzyme's going to be moving faster, so it's going to bump into its substrate more. And if we're thinking this, we're thinking about this a little bit differently now, we're doing photosynthesis. So what is the substrate that fits into the active site here? Well, it's carbon dioxide and it's water. So them two things will go into the active site, um, react together, we can think about that, and then what will come out is basically glucose and oxygen. Um, if you do air level biology, this isn't strictly true, but what you can think about it like that. Um, so kinetic energy would go up in this part of the graph, so the rate would go up, and that is because, yeah, the enzymes in the substrate are, are going to bump into each other more, so the rate of reaction will go up. Right, then we've got a thing called the optimum temperature. And then what's happening in the last part of the graph. So one mistake that students often make here is they describe this part wrong. Like if, if I said, what is happening in this part of the graph, you need to describe what's happening. And what people forget is, so in this part of the graph, temperature is increasing still. What's happening at the rate, the rate was there, now it's there. The rates went down, and then you need to see why. So people are normally good at this. So the enzyme is denaturing. What does that mean? So the substrate would not fit into the active site. So two lessons in, and we've used words like guard cells, stomata, spongy layer, palisade cells, chloroplast and chlorophyll, um, cellulose cell walls, starch, We've used concentration, rate, limiting factors, directly proportional and linear relationships. There's tons and tons of keywords. In biology, it's understanding the keywords and also like in what context can you use them keywords? And that's gonna be the problem. So we're halfway through the second lesson. What I would suggest is if you are someone that struggles with keywords, make yourself a glossary, right? The point of this is for you, you you're basically having to teach yourself a bit. I'm here to support you, so I want you to do this, have a go at the questions in the workbook that's getting sent out, and then mark your own, mark your own work, get in contact with me if there's any particular things that you need like a different explanation about, and that's, that's what I should be doing is helping you with the things that you can't, like cannot make sense of in your head. Right, the next thing and the last thing in this lesson is this inverse square law. God help her. Right, this is difficult. It's called the inverse square law. Uh, first thing we need to think about is the fact that light um, travels from a source in straight lines. So photons come out from a light and we know from physics that light travels as a transverse wave, but it does, it travels in straight lines. And we know that they can reflect and refract and we know all about them diagrams. But in biology, we need to think about this thing called the inverse square, square law. And what that says is, basically, if you double the distance from a source, so if we're, we're there or we're there, we've doubled the distance in 2R compared to R, what would happen to the light intensity? Well, the light intensity would quarter, right? And I'll explain why in a second. I just want to know if you can instinctively think about this. So forget about 2R for now. If you're at 3R, the distance is three times bigger. What would happen to the light intensity? Uh, have a think about it now. So what would happen to the, the light intensity is it would go down by a ninth. And I'm going to try and hopefully explain that now. We just really have to understand what these words mean. Right, in maths, if, if you have an inverse fraction, it's just one over something. So if we call like the distance x, so x here is basically like the change in distance. So if x is the change in distance, so I had r there, which was a certain distance away. If that's like th three times that now, x would be three. Do you know what I mean? So x is the change in distance. So that's the inverse part of it. It's like one over that. 
the square bit of it is just you just square x so if the distance is three times bigger than that that's like one times now it's three times bigger then x will be three so we inverse that one over three squared and three squared is nine so it would just be a ninth of the light intensity so the relationship between light intensity and distance is this thing it's called the inverse square square law so you basically figure out like the difference in the distance um, and you do one over that difference in the distance and you square it and that'll tell you how much the light intensity changes why does that happen it's just you can think about like putting a 2d object um, a certain distance away from a light source if you double that distance from that 2d object because light is spreading out like less of it's going to hit that 2d object and as it gets further away less and less um is going to hit it so it's called yeah it's inversely proportional so if you increase the distance you would decrease the light intensity at that right this is how it looks in the textbook and i think this is horrific um you would not have to remember this but you might have to apply this um this um formula in a question so i'll put a question up now but yeah i is intensity um you might have to figure out what the new intensity is what the old intensity is and um, d is just distance but remember you have to square the distance in in this formula right so i'll put a question up now right so i would write that formula down you will need to rearrange it so I original, distance squared original, we'll go there. I new, we'll go there. Distance squared, we'll go. Distance squared new, we'll go there. Triangle, oh my God, this is going to be difficult. I would write that down. Remember that O's original, so like the old one ends the new one. And uh, have a go at this question. I'll show you how to do it in a second. So pause the video now. So I pulled the information out of that question first. Right, so I know that this is the equation I need after I rearrange that. So the in old intensity is 2000 times the, di the original distance squared, 13 squared, divided by, sorry, that's the new distance squared so now it's a uh, 20 squared so to solve that 2000 times uh, 169 divided by 400 and what you should get is 845 lux right let's think about this let's take a step back so always check your answer so we had a intensity of 2000 at 13 centimeters if we increase the distance to 20 centimeters we're increasing the distance so what would happen to the intensity so if you got further away from a light bulb would the intensity go down yep it was 2000 has it went down yep so i'm pretty happy with that and um, if we think about it in a different way like it was 13 We've about doubled the distance, so we should quarter the thingy. So if it was 2,000, a quarter of that would be about 500. Uh, and it's not quite double the distance, so and it hasn't quite quartered the intensity. So I think that's right. Right, have a go at all the questions in your workbook on factors that affect photosynthesis. Um, I've just remembered that I didn't tell you what biomass was from the first lesson. So here we go, right, biomass um, is just the kind of dry way of living things. So if you took out all the water, so it's like in us it would be with bones and we're like cells without the cytoplasm. Um, and who has more biomass, you or like a year seven? Like you would because you, you grow. And when things grow, like when you grow you, you add more biomass to you and biomass is just like the material in a living organism 
uh, the dry weight of a living organism. So it's often, yeah, it's to do with plants and stuff. So how do plants increase biomass? Well, it's from photosynthesis. So they get glucose, but from that, they make starch, they make um, fats, and they make um, proteins and things like that in cell walls and cellulose, and that increases their biomass.